Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play Tales of the Abyss Part 13. This is resumed right off where I left off. Now you can't leave town without uh, Ion saying, hey, let's go rest of the inn. So we're going to go rest of the inn first. So, yay. So we go talk to this guy. And whenever there's a skit or like a scene that's going to happen in an inn, you don't have to pay at the inn. We we'll get a little scene By here. Way, Ion, where did they take you when they abducted you from the Tartarus? To the Sephiroth. The Sephiroth. The Sephiroth are the world's ten most powerful phone slots. They're the planet's vital points, places where memory particles, a kind of planetary fuel, concentrate, and phonons gather easily. Now, just so you know, this game has nothing to do with Final Fantasy VII. So, so yeah, just so you know. I, I knew that. You don't all have to launch into an explanation like I'm ignorant. What did they do with the Sephiroth? I can't say. It's confidential to the Order. You always say that. It's really starting to get on my nerves. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Jade, how are you feeling? Is your body okay? I mean, with that phone slot seal and all? My strength is somewhat diminished. My body's phone slots have been sealed, after all. You're so considerate, Master! <laughs> no, I'm not! It'd just be a pain if this old man keeled over on us, that's all. Ah, oh, you're blushing, Luke. <laughs> I am not! Is it going to be difficult to undo completely? A phone slot seal is like a lock with a code that changes periodically. I'm unlocking it little by little, but it looks like it will take a bit more time. As I get more experience, I'll level up, and then it'll get better. <laughs> Of course, my abilities are on a whole different level to begin with. Even after a partial drop, I don't imagine I'll have any trouble keeping up with the rest of you. <laughs> Man, you're obnoxious. My apologies. It's my nature to be honest. Huh. Well then, let's leave Ion in the hands of the great and powerful Colonel while we get some sleep. I don't know where they plan on going. There's one room in here. That exhaustion has to be more than just a weak constitution. Could Ion be the same as Luke? What? Here is a song in Saint Bina. There's an inn here. That was horrible. Decent bed to sleep in. The cold ground get to you? No way. Oh, well, that'll take a bed any day. No need to worry about thieves or monsters either. If they did come, it'd be no problem. Between Maku's necromancer and Locrian sergeant of the Oracle Knights, leader of Oracle of Lorelei, and the son of a Duke of Kunlaska, you'd be a fool not to run away. And of course, we have you, guy. Now, nah, just a servant. Eh. Just a servant indeed. Alright, uh, something cool you can do, and easily missable, by the way. Talk to the inn guy again, okay? And didn't say you want to stay the night again. Hey, guy. What is it? Quiet, or they'll wake up. Come with me, don't forget your sword. What the heck? Hey, look, it's the same generic background they use whenever they're outside. Yeah, yeah it is. How'd you know? I don't know, I've been reading into it a lot. I've been noticing. Oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. But guess what? We should swing our sword against each other now. So, so to get over my fear of swinging at, at attacking humans, I want to fight you. yourself a new move or something. <laughs> it's cooler when I, I usually buy them weapons by this point so they usually have the same sword. But oh well. You know what's cool about this though? Luke has learned Sonic Thrust. 
we're sleeping at the inn again. We already have full health. Alright, I don't think there's anything else, no. Once, once it says you have to pay money, you're like, ah, we already got everything. So, Luke's got Sonic Thrust. Now, this move doesn't have one of those little field-changing abilities. Anything that you mo you learn through, like, an event or something, they don't get those, which is kind of lame, because this should have something. But, uh, if we switch to Luke here... Oh, I already have Sonic Thrust set to... That, that, that makes sense, I think. Alright, but we're still using Guy. Susan Guy. Alright, we're fine. Okay, just so you know. Okay, you can buy stuff here. Uh, this stuff is going to be bought by by time uh, you see me here, okay? When I'm outside, you're pretty much going to see me with full equipment. So, I'm going to see you guys in a second. Alright, we're back in here now. Now, we've already visited the search points. I believe the items you're gonna need. Ooh, I have this. <laughs> that's right, that's kinda random. Max some hit points up. Let's give it to Guy. Um, we've gotten a lot of new stuff. I think the items you, you need are gel base and cotton. Cotton. <laughs> so, we talk to this guy now. Alright, so we hand over the things he needs. Yeah, gel base and cotton. Alright, now he'll give us a Miracle Gel. This is a very good item right now. Um, it'll restore 60% of your max hit points and tech points. So, it's pretty sweet. Now we talked to this guy, he has a shop now. Look at look at some of this stuff, like, specific. It covers everyone's maximum hit points. Although the good thing he has here are uh, life bottles. He sells these for 425 This is the cheapest you're going to find life bottles anywhere right now. So if you want some, I would stock up right now. And you could sell back the Miracle Gel and make some good cash too. Um, we're gonna sell the Cutlass here, and they're gonna keep the rod still. We don't want to sell any of this stuff, although you can sell for pretty good. So I think. Uh, Everyone's prices, yeah, everyone's prices go down once you do that quest there. So now, I think the items, the weapons, uh, have actually decreased in price too, which is why we didn't buy them. So we're going to go head back there. So if you're running low on life bottles, uh, try to make sure, try to uh, make the trip back to this town because 425 is pretty good. So we go talk to this guy now. Talk to this guy now. Yeah, the price of weapons have dropped. So, so now we're gonna buy uh, two rapiers. Uh, we want to get Jade's weapons before our tears because tears it's, it's not as important right now because she doesn't have any attack magic right now except nightmare. But uh, that's good. We get iron mail. Uh, white robe. We can't afford chain guard. Okay, so we can buy a lot of this stuff. So let's equip it to everybody. Uh, mace. Glaive. White robe. Uh, rapier. See, long sword didn't really help us in like one fight. <laughs> Iron mail. So now we can sell all this back. That, that, uh, wand, and spear. Uh, let me sell this. Alright, now we have some more money so we can buy the rest of our equipment. So, chain guard, a bracelet, gloves. Uh, let's see here. We got an iron helmet. And a cape. Oh no, we'll get a ribbon. Here. Okay. Let's put the iron helm on the guy. We'll put the ribbon on tier. It actually resists fire spells, which is pretty cool. And then we can give this to Jade. 
I could buy another iron helmet, but it's not really that necessary. So, so now we are fully geared up and we are ready to go. It says I've been playing 37 minutes. That's crazy. And do I have all the items I need? Yeah, I should be fine, I think. Uh, we want some magic lenses, though. They're 10 bucks here. They're, it's like 8 bucks otherwise in town. It's like whatever. I'm not saving that much. So we'll buy. We'll, we'll max out these just, just in case. That's probably all we'll need throughout the entire game is those 16 magic lens. So, and this guy over here, uh, this he'll sell you food. So, and we're broke right now. So we can't afford it. So let's get going. All right, what kind of girl? Just had to guide you or meet with Ennis. Well, you guys can get me home. The hotel will bridge out. I had to grab a ship by kite store anyway. Not really losing any time this way. Do the bridge at Exerius is out too. Now I have to cross Fubris River on foot. Fubris is pretty calm at this time of year. The water shouldn't be too high either. It's actually the shortest path to kite sewer, depending on how you look at it. You might say we're saving time. Then an Anne tried to cross that river too. I think she's okay. She's fine. She's Annis. No need to worry about Annis. Well, let's get going. Just who is this Annis anyway? This is pretty much like the same scene we got before we entered town. Alright, so all these enemies here we've seen. So we're gonna head straight to the Fubris River, and then we're gonna get some new encounters so that's the uh, search point I had to go to oh Fubus River's on this other side here but that's basically where I got the items from you know what I'm here I might as well get them here too so oh I got a bunch of items from that one so we need to go on the other side of these mountains here we've seen all these encounters but the new the place we're going into is actually a dungeon. All right, Fubris River. This is where we are going. Let's go. Now we're not. Next episode we're gonna tackle this place. Kimlaskin territory is just but, uh, Once we cross here, right? Yeah. We'll hurry up. There's a city called Kite Sewer after crossing the Fubris River. That whole area is the demilitarized zone. Man, I can't wait to get back. I'm sick of all this stuff. <laughs> Hang in there, Master. Cheer up. Do you ever shut up? I thought I told you not to talk. Mew. Luke, don't take things out on Mew. Like, he just punted him so far, and then that's not really a reaction. I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry I dragged you into this, Luke. Tuh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like Luke's done whining. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean whining? Hey, stop ignoring me! Oh, that's probably the title of the episode. All right, so we're gonna go down here. And we're gonna get our last tutorial of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Wait just a moment. What is it, oh great leader? Luke! <laughs> I've been watching you fight. It appears you don't have a firm grasp on proper phonon use. Using phonons is what phonists do. I don't need to worry about that. <sighs> Did your master teach you nothing but brute force? <laughs> don't make fun of Master Van. He didn't teach me that stuff because I don't need it. Whatever the case, you don't know how to use phonons in battle, correct? In that case, I'd like you to learn so you can fight more efficiently. Why the hell should I bother? Luke, this man is a professional. If you want to survive, you should listen to what he has to say. <laughs> yeah, professional killer. Indeed I am. And conveniently enough, there's a monster. I'll teach you during a real battle. It's a sphiel, or the a polywag. The seal has already <laughs> reduced my abilities. I don't want any further dead weight. Alright, so we're gonna, we're gonna do this tutorial here. Each phonon has one of six elemental attributes. But you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> of course. 
uh, earth, water, fire, wind, light, and shadow. Ha! I told you I knew them. Very good. Some monsters are weak against certain phonons. Please keep that in mind. Now, moving on to fields of phonons. A field of phonons is a place with a concentration of phonons. It's an area of power made by gathering phonons in one location. When you use an elemental attack, you will generate a field of phonons in that spot. I imagine it would be best to try it once. Tyr, a field of phonons if you would. Understood. See, Tyr has spells, like that invoke ground that she just learned, that can create these without using an actual spell. Like, Jade will learn maybe a wind spell that'll create one of these, but Tyr has an ability that just, its sole purpose is to create these rings. Some fields of phonons have no color, while others are the color of their element. It depends upon the level of the element. Until the phonons reach a certain level, the field of phonons will be colorless. Like this field of phonons. Which is unusable. Fields of phonons in this state have no effect. You don't really need to pay attention to them. Understand? Hey, don't treat me like an idiot. Next, <laughs> I'll explain the fields of phonons with color. Tear, if you would. Right. Some fields of phonons have the color of their element, as you see here. Earth is yellow, water is blue, fire is red, wind is green, and so on. In order to change a field of phonons' color, you must use elemental attacks to amass a certain level of phonons. I wonder how many times they've said phonons in this uh, episode. As you generate fields of phonons Keeping track. The, same element, the level of phonons will increase. So I just have to do a lot of attacks with the same element, right? Well, speaking simply. So speak simply. And what happens <laughs> when the color changes? Ah, yes. Please, step into the field of phonons. We were already in it. Is this good? Fine. Now, when you use certain arts, they will change to more powerful arts. Of course, the element for the field of phonons has to be compatible with the art. So the wind one is compatible with Fang Blade. Try it? Face that monster and press the art button to perform an art. Seriously? Field Thunder! Lightning Tiger Blade! See, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Whoa! That was cool! You will have a much better advantage in battle if you can use fields of phonons well. Learn to use them. Wow. Yeah, I'll try them out. Now then, let's take care of the remaining monsters. Alright. Sonic Thrust! So Luke also has Sonic Thrust now, too. Sonic Thrust! I'm demonstrating here, which, which is a very Lloyd and Kratos move. <laughs> that was easy, right? Alright, I don't know why load time was so long after that fight, but whatever. Next time on Let's Play Tales of the Abyss, we're going to tackle the Fubris River, and uh, maybe we'll actually get into some fighting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.